We're joined by Eddie Micheletti. Just finished up his season at Virginia Tech. He hit 311 and an OPS over 1,000. Had a great year down there. Eddie, appreciate you joining me. Thank you for having me, Billy. Absolutely. And you're preparing now for the draft. You had a great year at Virginia Tech. I'm sure you had a lot of great experiences, learned a lot from your time down there. Talk to me a little bit about your season this past spring and what you were able to learn from that experience and take away. Coming from the Atlantic 10 and GW, that's where I started my college career, jumping into the ACC, you know, my senior season campaign, it was a blast, really. I mean, I had so much fun. Um, you know, that was the biggest takeaway is I learned to just really enjoy the game that I love to play. Um, and, you know, stepping up and playing with, you know, in the best, one of the best conferences in baseball for college, uh, you know, that was a great accomplishment that I felt like I achieved. Making friendships and relationships that will last me a lifetime there, it was all around just an amazing experience. As we approach the draft, we're currently at the end of June. The draft's coming up, approaching. What's your daily routine looking like as we get to that point? Yeah, I wake up at 8.30 a.m. every morning, um, eat breakfast, get in the car. I drive up to King of Prussia and hit with my uh, hitting coach up in Brain and Barrel, uh, at Brain and Barrel. Uh, it's the facility name. Um, I hit there from 9 to 12, and then I go and lift. They have a gym there. I go and lift, and I do my uh, – I work with a virtual trainer. Uh, his name's Thomas Summers. He's down in Florida. I go down there and visit him, you know, in person here and there. But I use a remote training program with him, and I do my lifts there. And then I drive back, and the rest of the day I kind of work with kids uh, in baseball, and I try and teach them kind of the lessons that I was learned and kind of help them out with mechanics and coach them up a little bit and try and pass down the knowledge that I was taught. And if a team drafted you, what kind of player – and person would they be getting? Because we see a lot of guys, they have good numbers on paper, you have great numbers, but it's really important with the character, with the kind of teammate you are. What, what does that mean to you in terms of how you go about your business and how you can impact the team? Yeah, um, you know, whatever team drafts me this year is gonna get a leader, uh, someone who brings positive energy, um, someone who brings their teammates up with them. You know, I never wanna feel like I'm the only one going up. I want to bring everyone up with me. And someone who really has a passion to win. I'm a very competitive player on the field. You know, when I step on that field, I want to do everything I can to, you know, win that game. Um, and that, you know, in, in a nutshell, that's basically who they're getting. It could sometimes be difficult to stay disciplined and just dedicated to that process when there might be some adversity or challenges along the way. For you during this process as you're preparing for the draft and trying your best to just stay in the best possible shape, how do you stay disciplined? How do you get up every morning ready to go and, and just know that this work I'm putting in right now is going to lead to something greater as we move forward? You know, I think that, that question kind of falls back into my you know, support system and uh, you know, who kind of motivates me every day. You know, my parents have been there for me since day one, obviously, and they've poured so much time and, you know, money and resources into me. And just my motivation every day is I want to pay them back and really show them that their investment is worthwhile. You know, they've they've put so much love, energy, et cetera, into me, and I want to pay that back double, you know. And so that's why I get up every morning. That's why I work. And just for the love of the game, you know, I want to be the best. I'm competitive. Um, you know, within within what I like to do, um, and you know, you can't you can't be the best and not put in any work. So I get up every day, and that's what I do. Yeah, I've had uh, quite a few conversations with different scouts and different coaches, and they talk a lot about how much of an impact the parents can have, and they like to see what the parents are like, what the family dynamic is like, because that can have an impact on the kind of player or person that they might be getting. So that's definitely pretty crucial. And I'm wondering too with you know, how do you stay even keeled? Because this game, it's a game of failure. And young guys today sometimes just don't want to deal with that failure. They just want that success all the time. It's difficult to obtain that when you're failing so much in this sport, naturally. So how do you stay even keeled and just know that, okay, if I go over four one day, I'm going to be able to bounce back the next day and not let myself get too down on the negative? You know, that's something that I had to learn how to do, uh, be more even keeled with stuff. I was, you know, like at Virginia Tech, my uh, my hitting coach Kurt Elvin says, you, you know, there's a roller coaster and you got to stay in between it. Don't ride the roller coaster. And um, you know that kind of really helped me this year. They they really taught me how to stay even keeled in between processes, whether it's mental, you know, resets or just focusing on the bigger picture. 
or even just having your support system to fall back on, like my parents, my teammates, my coaches, um, you know, that's the biggest thing um, for me, how I learned is kind of just being more extroverted with your um, thoughts and, you know, being there to lean or, you know, lean on your teammates and be there for them to lean on you as well. Um, you know, that was kind of the biggest thing that helps me stay even killed. Yeah, it's tough to do that too, not just when things aren't going your way on the baseball field, but also if you have injury or you're going through a grueling process like that. Were there ever any situations where you just really had to sit with yourself and think, man, I, I need to find a way to just do my best to stay as middle of the road as possible as I try to navigate this challenge in front of me? So actually there was a big situation, uh, you know, where I faced adversity and, um, you know, it kind of hit me hard. Um, literally it hit me in the face. I broke my jaw, um, my sophomore year and I lost my season. Um, and that was kind of a big stepping point for me. I came off of an Appalachian league summer where I was an all-star, uh, and, you know, coming back, I really wanted that, you know, three hole spot at GW. I wanted to be the dude for the team and, I came back and I earned the, you know, being the three hitter, I was playing first base every day. I was, I was off to a great start. Um, and that season ended when, you know, that fastball hit my face, but, and, you know, trying where, this is where I really started to learn how to kind of hone in your even keeledness and, you know, staying locked in no matter what. And seeing the bigger picture is as time went on and as, as I healed and leaned on my parents, um, to kind of help me get back into it. Um, I ended up getting an extra year, which is one of the reasons why I transferred to Virginia Tech. So if I never have, you know, broke my jaw, I would have never been at Virginia Tech, which is kind of a funny story. Now, looking back, I haven't even realized the full picture of that it's a, uh, but I mean, just the, the, it was almost like a blessing in disguise. And so always keeping a positive attitude on advert, you know, adverse situations and, you know, having a great support staff and just staying even keeled. Um, in any situation, I think always yields positive results. Absolutely. Great stuff. Great stuff. Before we wrap it up, Eddie, I want to ask you something that I love to ask players because everyone has a unique opinion and, and thoughts as they reflect. But if you go back to your younger self and have a conversation, maybe you were in high school and you know, playing at the at the younger levels, is there any message you would tell yourself on either something to do differently or something that you should look forward to or something to look out for as you advance your career at the next level? Yeah. Um, when I was younger, I mean, I took the game extremely seriously um, and it almost took away kind of the fun, um, like playing it. And so if I had, if I could go back and talk to my younger self, you know, especially like the little league days and everything, I would just tell him to listen. I mean, the only way that you're going to achieve what you want is to have fun with the game. I mean, because if you're not having fun, it's just a game. I mean, what, it, you know, there's nothing you shouldn't, you should be playing the game if you're not having fun and, uh, you know, stay a little more lighthearted, have more fun on the field, obviously take your work seriously, but when you're playing the game, have fun, relax and enjoy yourself. And, you know, that's, that's what I've found out at Virginia Tech this year. So many kids are pressing, they're trying to be the best it possibly can and they're pretty much extracting the fun out of it and, and the joy so it's good you've been able to just realize that earlier and and be able to have fun out there but eddie i appreciate you joining me thank you very much for the time thank you billy